<laughs> okay, I gotta apologize. My uh, battery went dead, so uh, this uh, lecture is being split into two lectures. Uh, as you saw in uh, part one, uh, I, I stopped abruptly. That was the phone turning off. Um, it was pretty long, too. Anyways. This, this is going to be one of my longer lectures. Uh, the first one was 22 minutes, and hopefully we can get this through this uh, in, uh, in just a few minutes. All right. Um, we were looking at uh, my, uh, after we looked at Maxwell's demon and Laplace's demon, and again, go look at the part one of this video if you want to see those uh, uh, demons explain. I'm not going to explain them again, of course. Uh, we were looking at uh, Bentley's demon, my own demon that I created, uh, to try to um, uh, substitute for Maxwell's demon, because uh, again, I didn't like um, the fact that he had to be intelligent and uh, uh, had to push things open and have to have arms and eyes and, and stuff like that. I wanted to make a more mechanic mechanistic uh a demon than Maxwell's demon. Uh, I'm not going to go through the uranium gibberish. You can look at that up in the in the uh, other lecture that I was talking about, where I got the idea for this is from uh, nuclear physics. Uh, but I will just re quickly review what I what I'm going to do uh, to create a, a new demon uh, to substitute for Maxwell's demon. We're going to take like calcium ions or some sort of charged particles. They can be just electrons if you want or protons. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna heat this room up with uh, electrons. Let's say we'll just choose electrons. Or actually, let's make it protons. Um, <clears throat> so we'll put a bunch of protons in here that are hot at a specific temperature, uh, 100 degrees, whatever you want. And then we'll put a bunch of protons in this cold room uh, that are uh, uh, that are colder, like let's say 10 degrees. Um, but there's going to be like a distribution. Uh, these won't all be necessarily a hundred. Um, some will be cooler than others. And, uh, and, uh, these won't all be 10 degrees. There'll be a statistical distribution, a thermodynamic statistical distribution of particles in here. Anyways, uh, we're going to put some tubes coming out of these rooms. Uh, here's one tube right here. And again, protons, of course, are charged positively. And we're going to put a magnetic field in this, uh, whole system here. Uh, pointing down, and for your physics majors or anybody who wants to go look up the idea, the uh, concepts in, on Google that doesn't know physics, uh, if you have a magnetic field pointing down, of course, and positive charges moving this way, uh, they will be bent into a circular uh, uh, path like this. And uh, again, uh, looking at this formula, I, I went through it before. I don't want to go through it again. Um, uh, but basically, this is this is the formula that we're we're concerned with here. Uh, the protons in here are, and protons in here, that means the masses are the same. Uh, protons all have the same charge, so the Q is the same. So we don't really care about the mass or the, 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 the charge, Q. And of course, um, the B field is going to be the same, and the B, same B field is attacking the hot uh, protons and the cold protons. So we don't care about the B field. So the only thing we care about here is what is the velocity of the protons. In other words, the radius is only going to is only going to be proportional to the velocity which is our rote here and um and that's uh, proportional to the square root of the temperature um and our velocities as i mentioned in the of uh, part 1 are uh, non relativistic uh, very very small compared to the speed of light okay um so we don't have to worry about mass changing um according to einstein so if hot if hot protons come out here and are bent, uh, hot have high velocities. If the velocity is big, then the radius will be big. So hot particles will come around and have a big radius and go back into this room. But any, uh, 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 now here in the cold room, um, if there's any, if there's any hot particles whatsoever in this cold room, um, they'll come around, uh, here, and, um, they'll, they might not make it as hot as this one. The, the, these might be scraping the outside wall, but some of the cold ones here, uh, they, they might just, they just slide into this wall right here, and, uh, and, and slide into the hot, um, uh, hot, uh, um, uh, box right here. And and then the, and then the colder ones, of course, they'll be the the ones coming in in with radius 
Let me, let me state this again. If they're cold, the temperature is small. If the temperature is small, the velocity is small. And if the velocity is small, the radius is small. So when a cold particle comes around here, uh, its velocity is going to be small, so its radius is going to be small, affected by the magnetic field. And, and so if, since it's small, the radius is going to come along this wall, and it'll come the cold part of the really cold particles will still come into here. But some of the cold particles will fall into, like, around there, and some will fall there. And a few of the cold particles we can make, if we design this machine well enough, a few of them will scrape along and bounce into this room. Now, what will happen if you do that? Well, if the warmer of the particles in here, yes, they're cold, but the warmest cold particles start falling into this hot room, then... Um, this room will start getting colder because it only accept cold. The really cold particles will only be returning into this box, whereas the little bit warmer particles will be falling into the hot box. And if those particles fall into the hot box, of course, the box will get hotter. So again, we can see that we have a uh, Maxwell's demon scenario in the sense that a hot, uh, we can make hot, um, particles from the cold room, the hottest of the cold particles, have a little bit larger radius and fall into the tube that allows them to go into the uh, hot room. And if you run this experiment for a long time, uh, you, you, hopefully you'll get a feedback effect where uh, the hot particles go into the into the hot box, more and more hot particles go into the hot box, and, uh, and more and more uh, cold particles go into there, into this box, and so therefore the hot box will get hotter the temperature will go up and the cold box will get colder and the temperature will go down which again will break the uh, entropy uh, uh, always increases uh, thermodynamic rule and um, and uh, create a Maxwell's demon scenario without there's no intelligence in here except for the person who created this 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 scenario now you might say well you have to create a person that has that has this mag that, that created this magnetic field and and these two scenarios. Well, not really, because you can envision uh, this scenario occurring uh, perhaps on the surface of a star, where you have very complex systems where uh, you know you have magnetic fields that are created. I promise you, there are no humans on the sun creating the magnetic fields of the sunspots that occur on the surface of them. So this may be a this is a, this is a this is a mechanism. I mean, not not exactly like not with boxes and tubes and whatever but with uh with 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 um selectively uh, uh, uh areas of hot and cold uh on the surface of a star or maybe even the magma inside the earth or something where you can have hot and cold and, and if you have ionized charges you're going to have b fields uh in here fairly complex systems i made a very simple system so you don't necessarily have to have a human uh create this scenario although you could uh, my point is okay maybe i have to have a human create this also plus i have to put a human inside or a demon inside this box but in here at least I, all I had to do is have the human create the box and then just let it go. I didn't have to man it with a, an intelligent uh, demon that moves his arms around and has to eat Twinkies and cat and uh, chickens and uh, cows uh, to, to be able to split the, to the particles into two boxes. So I don't see why this kind of scenario um, couldn't happen somewhere in the universe, maybe at the center of the... <laughs> A galaxy, uh, the surface of the sun. Maybe you could describe uh, somehow how the 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 cold, the hot and cold cool spots on the uh, sun, the sun spots uh, occur. Maybe this is somewhat of a mechanism that is used there. Um, it is for the uh, history to uh, future history to tell uh, physics. Um, so, anyways, that was my proposal uh, for a substitution for Maxwell's demon, and I decided to call it a Bentley's demon if the name ever takes hold. <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Uh, it was about 31 minutes, including the two parts. Uh, but um, I look forward to any comments at the bottom. Thank you very much.